All right, folks, Chad here with Extra Trail Cameras. It is finally November. It is the Super Bowl of the whitetail season. And oftentimes, this time of year, guys are constantly talking about time and stand, grinding it out in rut funnel or rut type location. Regardless of your strategy, regardless of your tactic, your season can change in five seconds. And while that's true, you know, just going out and sitting in a funnel it might not make it happen for you. And one of the important things here that we need to touch on first is really understanding what a rut funnel is versus a funnel versus a pinch point versus a travel corridor. I think a lot of guys kind of use those terms interchangeably and it can keep confusing for whitetail hunters that are less experienced or even experienced whitetail hunters who are trying to carry on a conversation with somebody. Uh, if you're using terms with two different meanings and using them interchangeably, you know, that creates a barrier there. So to really understand this video, which is being able to identify rut funnels through digital scouting, you need to understand those terms. And when you think about the rut, everything is geared, all the deer movement is geared towards breeding, towards does. So when you're identifying funnels, it may not just be um, a fence row leading into a bigger chunk of timber. It may not be two inside corners coming together. If that funnel is not relating to doe bedding or breeding we're not going to classify that as a as a rut funnel and to go a step further you can have pinch points inside of funnels a funnel is just an area where it's concentrating deer movement but inside of that funnel if you have a down tree or a gap in a fence that's creating a further pinch point inside of that funnel so it's important to really understand what you're talking about uh, think about those terms in the context of the situation and apply it towards your 2020 rut. So to dive in and actually look at this, you know, just in a couple days, I'm gonna be headed to Missouri to hunt for, I don't know, seven days, 10 days, hopefully it's only three days, but I'm gonna hunt until uh, I fill my buck tag or rifle season comes in. And I bought this tag on the spur of the moment. I have zero scouting done. I have zero uh, boots on the ground, zero digital scouting, zero trail camera history. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the example, and I'm not going to show you the exact piece I'm hunting. I'm going to show you something in Indiana, but it's similar terrain. I'm going to show you how I'm going to break this down and find rut funnels and why they're rut funnels, how I'm going to hunt them or hang cameras in them um, so you can further diagnose your piece of property and hopefully find success. So let's dive into this piece in Indiana. So as we get going here in Onyx, the first thing you're going to see is I have my uh, several layers turned on here. I have public access layer, I have private boundary layer, and then I have government land layers turned on. That's important to identify, obviously, the piece of public that you may, or piece of property you may have access to. And you'll notice real quick, this isn't a giant chunk. It's probably a few thousand acres, but I already have some pins dropped. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of these pins. And while we're still kind of zoomed out, not you know we're at a thousand feet of uh, bird's eye view here, not super, super tight, because you want to be able to identify how much structure is in, an, in that area. Regardless of what, where you're scouting or what you're looking at, you're looking for terrain features or structure uh, that is going to create some type of funnel. So as you see here, the ground's relatively flat, not a whole lot of topography. And if we actually turn on that to topo layer, um, there's not much elevation change. Pretty, pretty flat ground. So we're gonna go in ag ground, we're simply just gonna use um, the satellite image. And these pins and these points are just giving you reference points to get started. Uh, you're gonna wanna go in and physically take a look at these, but this is gonna be able to help you identify these rut funnels for boots on the ground scouting and for camera locations. So this very first pin we're gonna take a look at here is this blue, this blue icon and this blue pin that, uh, that, I'm, that I'm circling right now. As you can see, we have two inside corners here and here coming together with bigger chunks of timber to the northwest, bigger chunk of timber to the south, and then we have these small woodlots or kind of um, fence rows, I guess. I guess they're woodlots kind of coming, coming together. Now, in general terminology, that's going to create a funnel, but why this is a rut funnel is because I've identified some edge and diverse habitat right here from the satellite image that could potentially, I'm not saying that it is, but it could potentially be bedding opportunity for whitetails. So thinking now, 
So I've identified a funnel. I've identified why it's a rut funnel because of the betting opportunity. Now I'm gonna look at what is the predominant wind or prevailing wind there? How am I gonna access that? And then how am I gonna set up to physically hunt it or at least hang a camera? You can see there's access to the north. There's a road here. And then there's also access coming from the west. In Indiana, the prevailing wind is gonna be some type of westerly wind. So I'm assuming that with a northwest or uh, southwest or west, probably a northwest, that there's gonna be deer bedded in here with this wind blowing over their back and they're on the edge of this field looking out with you know a view of what's out in front of them and i have no idea if this field's in ag if it's in some kind of crp program if it's a fallow field you're not going to know some of this information until you put boots on the ground but playing this with a west wind because i think that's ideal for white tails to actually bed in this location i'm looking at access so i want to access obviously downwind so you would have an access point from this road walking south down through here scouting your way in and then once you get into this funnel you really need to start looking for sign and specifically deer trails to see how whitetails are actually using this piece and when you kind of zoom in here thinking that we're going to have a northwest wind so the reason why i like a northwest wind again not only do you have bedding opportunity for whitetails there but it also allows any buck down here, any buck to the east, any buck over here to kind of come through these general pinch points and scent check this bedding area. And that's a super important thing when you're looking at these um, hunting opportunities during the rut to make sure that you are playing that downwind side of doe bedding. So with that in mind, knowing that we're gonna have a northwest wind, I'm probably gonna wanna look at some type of setup where I'm kind of hugging this northeast corner of that funnel. So that's going to allow my wind to come this way and give me clean air out in front of me into this bedding. Um, hugging close to this field edge is also going to give me a thermal play both in the morning and the evening with my thermals either being dropped down and pulled in here in the evening or also pulled out there out towards the middle of this field as the air heats up in the morning time. I'm anticipating this not to be a fallow field or not to be our, to be CRP. So I don't think there's going to be potential there for betting, but that if there is, um, if it isn't CRP or is a fallow field with potential for betting, obviously you want to, you want to change that up a little bit. So again, Northwest wind, it's giving, um, uh, giving these bucks opportunities to send check this potential betting area. If we had some type of Southerly wind or Southwest wind, I guess I probably would still I'd probably still set up the same way. And if it's an area that when you get in there, maybe you see a scrape, um, maybe see some hot sign, obviously I would throw a camera up, a cellular camera if you have it, that way you have the real time inf information uh, in this kind of short window. So another thing to keep in the back of your mind is if this potential bedding area isn't holding any does and you have bucks traveling through this rut funnel to scent check and you know deer are gonna be on their feet, cruising, looking for these hot does, if he strikes out here, it's important that in the back of your mind, if a deer skirts you or uh, if you see more than one deer do the same thing to be able to make a play on that buck or on that deer. So it's important to identify possibly secondary betting opportunities kind of in the same vicinity. And as you see just over here to the east, and it's just a couple hundred yards over here, it looks like there's some diversity, um, possibly some again some potential for for cover and just looking at the way that these pinch points lay out um, i would assume that a buck's gonna probably scent check this from the south traveling to the north and then end up walking with some type of tailwind over into this bedding area skirting this north part and then coming back through and circling this bedding potential bedding area again downwind so maybe you scout this you find no bedding here this would be another spot to just kind of speed scout, um, confirm that it's a bedding area, and then that potential stand set up for this rut funnel could be here or could be back, uh, back here a little further, just depending on what the sign's telling you. So while we're looking at this secondary bedding opportunity and rut funnel kind of in the same general location, you see these fence rows 
kind of all pinching down here. So right here, where this these two fence rows or tree lines come together, that's a perfect example of a pinch point inside of a rut funnel. So we have this entire area being a funnel where there's a concentration of deer movement and these pinch points pinpointing where that movement is inside of that funnel. And another interesting thing is you hear, um, you know, Don Higgins and a lot of guys that hunt big ag talk about this a lot is when bucks finally find that doe to lock down with, they're wanting to get them away from other deer to have them to themselves. So they're trying to isolate them. So um, this would be an example. This fence row would be an example of an isolation spot. You know, we, and maybe you've watched a couple of our videos and you've heard us talk about these isolation spots where bucks are pushing these does to actually lock down and breed with them. But this fence row would be a prime example. It's located close to bedding um, in security cover where the buck can actually push a doe somewhere out in that fence row and actually physically breed her. So as we take a look at a couple of these other pins, we're gonna zoom in here and we'll stay right here at about 500 feet. So you see that um, you know there's some access roads here and immediately when I started looking at this piece of ground, these two funnels kind of caught my eye. And you have three bigger chunks of timber kind of all coming together with this fence row that's running east and west but then trying to correlate that to doe bedding or that rut movement, I was really trying to basically struggling to find um, some bedding opportunity. And in fact, the first bedding opportunity that I could find in that general area is just across the road. Um, so again, these are spots that you can definitely go scout, definitely go look at. I don't know that I would just go set up blind in an area like that because, because of the bedding. Now, if you get out to a piece like this and, you know, you're in this exact example where the bedding is separated by a road from the actual funnels or pinch points, it's important to obviously monitor how much traffic is on that road, what type of road it is. If that road is uh, blocked off or if it's a gravel road, sees one or two cars a day, I would actually hunt this like the road did not exist. And that's something that we see in the big woods quite a bit, you know, deer will cross roads as long as... Uh, as long as there's not a whole lot of traffic or, or, or danger there for them. So I just wanted to point this out that, um, you know, two primo funnels, but not necessarily correlating to close bedding. Guys, we hope this video helps. This is how I'm going to break down my, my Missouri hunt. And um, I think that I'm going to find pretty good success with it. So hopefully it helps you guys out. Uh, we want you guys to have a great 2020 and a fantastic November. Good luck.